My dearly beloved in Christ, in today's gospel, we read about a steward. So the question comes to mind, what exactly is a steward? A steward is one who manages the property of another. It's not his own property, his own possessions, but he is managing the property for his master. And in this case, we have a rich man who has a steward who has been squandering his master's possessions. And the master calls him in and says, what is this that I hear of you? Because you're not going to be steward any longer because you've been wasting my possessions. And I think this is something we can apply to ourselves because we're like a steward. Everything we have comes from Almighty God. It is not ours. It is given to us to use for God's honor and glory. And that pertains to our natural gifts, our body with his senses, our soul with its faculties of understanding or intellect and free will, memory, and also whatever material things we have, really everything belongs to Almighty God. But on top of natural gifts, we have the supernatural gifts, the life of sanctifying grace, which we receive for the first time in baptism. All of the actual graces and sanctifying grace that we've received throughout our lifetime, all the times we've received the sacraments, every inspiration, every grace, all of these are gifts of Almighty God. And how have we used our master's gifts? Have we squandered his possessions? Because like the steward in the gospel, the time will come when we are called in to render an accounting for how we have managed our master's possessions. This reminds me of a story that is told, I believe it was St. Francis. And our Lord said, said to him, give me a gift. And he said, Lord, everything I have is yours already. The only thing I have that is not yours is my sins. And you certainly don't want that. And our Lord said to him, give me your sins that I might blot them out. But isn't that a sad thing to think about? That the only thing we have that God had no part in, the only thing that is truly ours, would be the sins that we have committed in our lives. And yet, we can, through tears of repentance, we can offer to God our contrition, our sorrow for sin. But more than that, we can serve Almighty God by using the gifts he has given to us. We can love him and serve him. And our Lord craves our love. We think of the Sacred Heart, our Lord saying to St. Margaret Mary, Behold this heart which has loved men so much and is so little loved in return. Our Lord craves our love. And even in the Old Testament, in the book of Proverbs, we read these words, My son, give me your heart. That is something that God, that belongs to him. Our love, our loyalty. And is it not humbling to realize that Almighty God, who owns the universe nevertheless craves our love. So much so that he sent his only begotten son in the world to suffer and die on the cross, not just to redeem us, but as it were to force us to love him. Because when we think of Jesus Christ and all that he suffered and did for us, we are compelled to love him. It would be base in gratitude to not love him in return after everything he has done for us. So he craves our love. And how do you know if you love God? It's not a feeling. Rather, love is proved by service. Our Lord said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That is the proof of our love. Let us then love our Lord and serve him faithfully. Now this past week 
the priests in our breviary have been reading the lessons from the third book of Kings from the Old Testament on the dedication of the temple. And every year as I read these lessons, it still inspires me to reflect upon what Solomon did. So David, King David, wanted to build a temple. And God sent his prophet to David to say, no, you're not going to build a temple for me because your hands have been stained by, with blood. David not only killed the giant Goliath, but he went forth into battle many times. He killed many enemies. And so because his, his hands were stained with blood, God did not want him to build the temple. But he said, your son who shall reign after you will build a temple to my honor. And that was one of the first things that Solomon did when he became king, was to design and bring about the erection of an absolutely magnificent building to the honor and glory of God, the ancient temple. And it took seven years to build this temple, and it was so carefully designed that there was not the sound of a hammer or a saw heard in the temple because all the wood and the stones, everything was prepared off-site and then carefully fitted into place because they considered it would be offensive to God that there be all this noise of construction in the site of his temple. And then finally, after seven years, when the temple was ready for the dedication, they brought the Ark of the Covenant into the temple with great ceremony, a procession of all the priests and all the elders from the 12 tribes and King Solomon himself, and this large concourse of people. And to show his acceptance of this house of worship, a cloud came down over the temple. And the people fell on their faces at this display of God's approval. But it says also, I don't remember the number, literally thousands of sacrifices, animals that were sacrificed. So why did they sacrifice animals in the Old Testament? Because by taking these possessions, which were very valuable to them, their domestic animals, removing them from human use and offering that sacrifice to God, this was a way of giving homage to God. And yet, those sacrifices had no value except in that they foreshadowed the perfect sacrifice of Christ on the cross. So God was pleased with these sacrifices because of whom they represented. And in like manner, we give to God the sacrifice of our service. We unite our carrying of the cross, our sacrifices with our Lord in the holy sacrifice of the Mass, and we offer that to God. Because as St. Francis said, of ourselves we have nothing to give him but our sins. But nevertheless, by cooperating with God's grace, by using our free will to choose to do what is right, we honor Almighty God and we give him the tribute of a loving service, loving worship. So let us remember, like the steward in the gospel, that one day we also will be called to account. Give an account of your stewardship. How did you use the gifts that I gave you? Did you use them for my honor and glory? May we all be able to say, yes, Lord, I have sought to love and serve you as best I could. Humbly receive the homage of my service. And I am most grateful for all the gifts that you have given to me, which are yours and not mine. And I return them to you with love and gratitude. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs>